Hey everyone, Rose here, and here's part 2 of the protogen. In last week's video, I showed you guys how I sculpted and modeled this character, and in this video, I'll be doing the UVs, materials, and rigging. Like last time, I don't have the time and energy to voice the whole video, but I'll pop in every now and then when there's something interesting I feel like I need to mention. Starting with the UVs, my workflow is pretty much the same as always. I just add a UV grid to the material so I can check for any stretching and squishing and stuff like that, and then I go around using control to tag the seams all over the model. I also turned on live unwrap just to make sure the UV map instantly updates as I tag new seams. That's something I'm going to want to turn off later when I'm arranging the UV maps, but right now while I'm just creating them, I want the quick updates to make sure I'm getting rid of all of the stretching and stuff. The only difference to most of the other models I've done is that here for the high poly parts of the model I have some edges that are marked sharp, and those ones have to have a seam, or else stuff is going to turn out weird when I bake. After marking all the seams and making sure there's no stretching anymore, it's time to pack the UVs. But before that, I take a break to work on the rig. Like with most of my rigs, instead of starting from scratch, I just add and modify a rigify meta rig. A couple of people have been confused in the comments in the past, so just to clarify, I'm not actually generating the finished rigify rig, I'm just adding in the meta rig as a base to make a very basic, bare bones, FK only rig. <laughs> 
The reason I do this is because it saves some time over making the whole rig from scratch, because most of the bones I need are already in place and already have their correct names and stuff like that. So I really just need to move them into place rather than having to add and name every bone from scratch. Obviously, the rig isn't going to match 100%. And I have to like add a couple of extra bones here and there for things like the tail and the ears and maybe remove a couple of bones here and there too. But it's still a lot faster in my experience than making it fully from scratch. It's obviously possible to then take a rig like this and generate it into a new Rigify Meta Rig. But for that you're gonna have to modify some of the properties of the bone so that they generate into the right kind of like chain or whatever. And... I don't really want to do that for commissions because a more complex rig means it takes a bit more time even if I am using an auto rig like Rigify and there's just a lot more for me to troubleshoot and a lot more that can go wrong. So I prefer to just keep it to very simple basic rigs. And once all the bones are added and in their correct positions, it's time to parent the meshes to the rig. Now this is like one of the only situations in which making a hard surface character was actually easier for me because the fact that so many things are in separate meshes makes it a lot easier to weight paint. To do this I just selected all the bones and used shift w to disable deform and then I just selected the bones I wanted to deform a certain part of the model and turned deform back on for them and then I could just parent the individual meshes to just the bones that should actually deform them and that way I didn't get any stray weights from other bones messing up the deformation. That was especially useful for stuff like the upper arms, the chest and the legs where I essentially only had one or at most two bones deforming each piece of the mesh so I didn't even have to manually do any fixing of the weight paints. The only part of the model that I actually had to manually paint in was the tail, since that's the part that had the most bones. And because there's relatively few bones for the length of the tail, I ended up with relatively sharp joints that I had to manually smooth out. For things like the torso and the mane, I was able to just manually assign some of the weights in edit mode and also use the gradient tool to quickly get the smooth transitions I needed. I tried that for the tail as well, but it didn't work as well. Now it's time to head back to the UVs. Now that the rig is done, I can also apply all the mirror modifiers that need applying, specifically those around the chest and torso. Next I make a couple more tweaks to my seams. I remove some here and there to reduce the amount of UV islands I have and add a couple more to reduce stretching. <laughs> 
finally it's time to pack the UVs. For that I select everything and unwrap so that everything's on the same UV island. And then because I'm using UV Pack Master to pack, I assign different materials to different parts of the body so that those are grouped together in the final sort of UV layout. I also use UV Toolkit to straighten the UVs on some of the more hard surface objects since I felt like that would probably make the bakes and textures fit a bit better on them. And after a couple more tweaks to the size and shape of different islands so that everything sort of aligned nicely and had the amount of texture space I wanted it to have, I could finally pack the UVs and ended up with a great UV map. Except for one minor issue. Now, up at the top of the UV editing screen, Blender has the option to select and then select overlapping. That is a very useful tool because that will show you if you have any parts of your model that are overlapping in the UVs. I did not do this and that was a very big mistake. Now obviously I had gone over the model and just like looked for overlapping UVs but there were evidently some that I had missed and so I had to redo the packing and baking several times over for this model because I found several bits of overlapping UVs that caused issues with the bake. So essentially all the time that I had spent like assigning materials to different parts of the mesh and making sure everything had the kind of size I wanted ended up being kind of a waste because I just went with like whatever layout the bake or whatever layout UV Packmaster gave me for the final model, which was fine just a bit annoying. I'm a little bit mad at myself for that. Anyway, if you'll remember in the last video I mentioned that for a lot of the hard surface bits it might have been kind of a waste of time to model the whole subdivided mesh when I could have just duplicated the low poly version and beveled that to get the like softened edges that I wanted. Well, that's what I'm doing here. I just duplicate the low poly versions of the legs, arms, and like headpiece thingy, and just bevel them at a couple of support loops here and there to get the shading I want, and then just use those as a high poly versions to bake from. And that worked great for the normal map. It didn't end up working that great for ambient occlusion though, because ambient occlusion doesn't bake based on the normals, it bakes based on like the actual geometry. So like I had to sort of manually blend the ambient occlusion map for the final model. Once again, it turned out fine, but would have probably been better to just um, actually figure out how to make a proper high poly version and break from that. But oh well, worked out in the end. I've learned many things that I can then use next time. For the non-hard surface bits, I added the decimate modifier just to reduce the poly count a little bit, and then I tweaked them a little bit in edit mode just to make sure that they didn't have super stretched out tries in places. Finally, I turn off all the mirror modifiers since I don't want it to sort of try and bake to the same texture space twice. And I hide the objects that don't need baking, specifically the sort of face screen thingy and the horn. I don't know the terminology for protogens, I don't have any protogen characters myself. And then I import everything into Marmoset. Since I was on a roll with trying out new things with this model, I figured it would be a good opportunity to just try out a new program. And Marmoset has been one that's been recommended to me a lot when it comes to baking. And while XNormal works quite well, having the extra options like being able to edit the cage and just seeing what you're doing in 3D space, very useful, would recommend. And like I mentioned earlier, I did have that issue with my bakes turning out a bit messed up because I had overlapping UVs. That was, as I said, a problem with overlapping UVs, so that was just me being a bit dumb and forgetting to check my UVs and not like a software issue. Neither Blender nor Marmoset can fix my user error, sadly. But yeah, as I said, I've really enjoyed baking in Marmoset so far. 
the fact that it has a 3D viewport where I can not only see the high and low poly meshes but also easily tweak my cage is good. Plus I can just see a preview of the finished normal map so I can tell if there's any issues that I need to rebake. The bake's very fast which is also nice. And as long as you have all your objects named properly in Blender, you can just tell Marmoset to import everything and it'll automatically make these baking groups, meaning you don't need to explode the mesh, it'll just bake each high poly object with its own low poly object and ignore all the objects around it, which is very practical. That means that if I want to make any like tweaks and stuff, if I notice something's wrong with the model, I can just quickly make that tweak in Blender, press export and Marmo automatically imports it and I can just quickly rebake it, fix the things that need fixing and be done, which is very nice. Took a while here, again, because of those UVs, but in general, the process was very good. Uh, I wouldn't say I had fun, but it was definitely a lot less annoying than baking in Blender, which I've done in the past, and it was a bit more convenient than baking in XNormal. Uh, Marmo obviously isn't a free software, but it's also not like the most expensive, so it seems worth it for me. After a whole bunch of messing around with the model and the UVs, I eventually ended up with a bake I was happy with, so now it's time to move on to the final materials. I have messed around with a couple of different programs for materials, Substance Painter and 3D Coat, but I don't know, I've not really been happy with either of them, so I textured this model in Blender. I might give Substance another go if I ever do something that has more complex realistic textures and I'll definitely be using 3D coat when I'm doing things that are very stylized and require more hand painted textures, but for this model it was a sort of in-between thing where I really needed the proper PBR render engine but the textures weren't super complicated so it worked out in Blender. I started out by just filling each object with its main color, which I color picked from the reference image, and then went in to paint in more details manually later. I also used a color mix node set to multiply to add the ambient occlusion on top for a bit of extra color, or like a bit of extra depth, I guess. Since this model has a bit more like distinctly different materials than most of the other commissions I worked on, I had to add an extra map for roughness and for metalness. And I also had to use the metalness mask to sort of lighten the metal parts of the objects because as soon as you make something metallic, it looks a lot darker than the base color if it's just diffuse. <laughs> 
blender isn't quite equipped for a texture painting a model like this that has multiple different texture maps because there isn't really a way for me to like edit several textures at once for example in blender i couldn't just like fill in the helmet with black and glossy at the same time or like black and low roughness or fill in say the arm with silver and metalness at once i have to paint on all the different maps separately and fortunately on this model the different pieces that sort of had different roughness or different metalness were either separate UV islands or completely separate meshes, so I could easily mask them off using edit mode masking. But on a slightly more complicated model, this would have been a lot more of a pain. I had a little bit of that issue when I was working on the little cylinder bits on the tail, because the bulk of them is um, metallic, but these tiny little lights aren't supposed to be metallic, and I couldn't paint like their blue color and the metalness at the same time so I just had to sort of manually try and line it up and that was not easy. Uh, a little bit of a pain. Layers would also be pretty nice to have for texture painting though um, there are add-ons for that and it's relatively easy to replicate layers with nodes even though it's a bit time consuming. In fact that's how I'm doing the ambient illusion right now. It's essentially just a multiply layer on top of my textures, and later the paint dripping off of like, the chest and the legs. I also do that with the separate texture that I essentially add on like the layer. Like most protogens has these little screens on different parts of their body and uh, in their case they're little like heart 
pixelated heart images on them. I messed around in Blender for a bit to try and see if I would be able to paint them in there, but it wasn't going so well, so instead I just sort of painted in the rough shape of the heart and then exported the texture into Krita and painted the remaining details on there. The face I did in Blender though, since that didn't have that pixelation which was what was causing me difficulty. Here's the thing I mentioned earlier with the tail, where I had to manually paint the color and the metalness for, like, separately for the little glowy bits. Obviously, there is the option of making an additional texture and using that as a mask, but I find that a bit unwieldy because of how Blender handles textures, especially when it's for a tiny thing like this. And here's where I jump over to Krita to make the little hearts. As I mentioned, I had just painted the rough shape of the hearts in Blender so that I knew how big they had to be. And now in Krita, using layers, I could pretty easily just make like a grid and uh, paint in the pixelated heart shapes the way I wanted them to be. And then I could just duplicate them around to different parts of the model rather than having to paint them manually in each spot, because they're pretty much the same on all the parts of the model. And now, with the basic colors and materials in place, the last thing left to add is the spray paint. I mentioned earlier that I don't really like using extra textures as masks when working on small details for the model, but for something like the paint here, it was very useful. I just added an additional texture and painted a black and white mask, marking out where the drops of paint should be, and then I could use that mask to control the roughness, metalness, and color, and even a bit of bump for the paint so that it really looked like paint that was added on top of the basic material and not like an original part of it. And with the paint done and some final little tweaks to the rest of the materials, this model is complete. And here he is. And despite the process being quite the adventure, I'm actually really happy with how he turned out. As you'll probably notice if you take a look at the rest of my channel, I usually stick to mostly organic models. I don't really do much hard surface stuff. So since this model had relatively simple hard surface parts, it was a great opportunity to sort of figure out how all of that worked and how to add all of that into my workflow. Especially if you watched the first video, you'll know there was a whole lot of going back and forth and spending a whole lot of time on things, some of which didn't even end up being that useful. 
but that's all part of the process and having done this model now i think if i do more protogen characters in the future or just characters with some simple mechanical parts i'll be much better equipped to handle them of course i'm not suddenly just gonna become a mech or a prop artist or something like that i still definitely prefer organic stuff while sculpting and modeling but it does open up a lot of opportunities for me for my own characters and for commissions and stuff like that knowing that i'm able to do some basic hard surface stuff anyway that's been all for me for today and for this character in general i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like comment subscribe all that take a look at the links in the description and I hope you guys have a nice week and see you all next time.